This is not just an inverter, it's also a solar charge controller. But unlike a lot of them out there, this one is low frequency. So it's actually really heavy. So let's get into it. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm David. Welcome to my channel where we do some DIY projects for renewable energy and energy conservation. In this video, we're gonna review this uh, inverter, which is an inverter and a solar charge controller in one. Now, in a previous video, I reviewed a 5,000 watt LV5048 from MPP Solar. Now, it was a high frequency inverter charge controller combination, and it couldn't start my power tools. Now, this is a low frequency one. So, I'm excited because low frequency inverters usually have a much better surge capacity. Now this one is from a company called Sigineer, and they do a lot of low frequency, big transformer based equipment. So I'm really excited. They essentially sent me the unit for free and I paid for shipping and handling. Now the unit usually sells for $529 and $150 shipping here to the US. So I did pay for shipping, but the unit itself was provided. That being said, they don't tell me what to say in the reviews, and if it's a piece of junk, I'll tell you. Off the table, it's eight inches tall. It is 14 and a quarter inches wide, and standing tall, because this is the bottom, so standing tall on your wall, it would be 17 and a half inches to these grab bars that kind of protect some of these electrical uh, terminals. This is a 2,500 watt inverter, it has a 48 volt DC input. It has a maximum of 150 volts DC for the PV input. And this particular one will put out the 120 volts AC, which we use here in North America. Here's the cardboard box that it came in. Uh, there was really no damage, it arrived on time. It came with a steel back plate for mounting it, and it also came with a user manual and we have some terminals and a few different cables in here including a USB. We got 71.0 pounds. <laughs> All right. So like I said, it's heavy. Inside the unit, there is a yellow colored piece of plastic here, so let's take that off so we can see all the components. First, the overview, we're gonna have a big transformer and then we're gonna have the inverter components. We have relays over here, we got relays over there, we have some of these control boards. So let's take a look. Uh, down here, this is gonna be the PV input and the battery and then down here is the AC terminal block. So up top when we look at this, it looks like the positive wire is jumping between the PV and the battery. So they're tied together on the positive side, and that means that the negative side is gonna be the switching side. We have 12 millimeter square wire on the PV wire, and then on the battery wire is 16 millimeter. All these wires are the AC, so probably switching between, say, the generator uh, AC input and the output and that's what all these relays probably do. So we have the main battery negative, which comes down to this relay board, and it looks like we have some 40 amp uh, automotive style fuses, and over into the main components here, which are going to actually give us the uh, DC to AC. And then we have a big transformer, and I love that they have a big transformer here. 38 volts to 115 volts. And we've got a current sensor. And I don't know what all the different components are. I can see we got heat sinks and capacitors. But I love seeing inside here, even though I don't know what all the parts are. But it's just really fun to see how it's all put together. That was a lot of fun getting to see inside. But let's put it back together and see how well it works. Over here we have our AC output for ground, neutral, and line. So let's go ahead and hook this up. 
Now ideally these would be spade connectors or something like that. But that's what we're going to go with for now. Here's the test setup so that we can test this inverter. First thing we're going to test is how efficient this is at running loads. So we have this 6 kilowatt hour lithium battery that I built in some previous videos. We're running it through a shunt and this meter. So we're going to get both the volts, the amps, and the watts running through here. The circuit breaker is currently off. We're going to use this little resistor to pre-charge the capacitors inside here so we don't blow anything out. I've also got another meter clamped on the AC line so we'll be able to measure the amps, the volts, and the watts coming out. So that way we can take the watts coming into the unit, the watts coming out of the unit, just over here to this outlet, and we'll get how efficient this is. For turning on this inverter, I like to start off with my super safe gloves from here, and I've also got some goggles on. Now the first thing is to pre-charge the capacitors in here. Lithium batteries can inrush a huge amount of current, and it could blow capacitors. I've actually done it. Now I'll link to this, but this is a little 100 watt little resistor, and I've got it on the positive side of the battery over here, and the circuit breaker's off. So the goal is, I'll just reach over here on the positive side, which is going to be right here, and we should see the screen turn on. And it sounded bad. Hopefully that was just the relay and not actually a, a capacitor blowing apart in there. <laughs> There we go. So we just started up. And over here, with nothing plugged in, it looks like we're using 123 watts. This is outputting 119 volts AC, 60 hertz. That's exactly what we want. And it's got a cool little display there too. All right, well let's plug in a 1500 watt heater. Says it works! Awesome! I just turned on this space heater. So the output, we have 1.5 kilowatts. And the input, 1.69 kilowatts. Great. Well, here's my table saw. And this is a 15 amp motor. Oh, it's really good to see that. Alright, so we know the saw can start. Excellent. Well, here's my air compressor. So here we go. I'm going to have to relieve a little bit of the air pressure in here. The hardest thing to start is my miter saw, so let me wheel that around here. Remember, there's nothing else on the inverter right now. It's just this from a dead start, so let's see if it goes. Here's my wet dry vacuum that I'm going to attach to the miter saw. Now the miter saw is a 15 amp motor and this is 11 amps. So together we have 26 amps. <laughs> now that should overload this, but we'll see if it can get through a cut. All right, here we go. Start in the vacuum, no problem. Here we go. 
So this is a a tough tough piece of boat, to, you know. So you know, just just take a look at that chunk there. <laughs> so can it do it? Yes, it can do it. Obviously, it it made it through the cuts. But what I found is that it did overload it when I really yanked down on the miter saw with the shop vac running at the same time. So really plowing through the wood, it overloaded the inverter and snagged up. But it made it through the cuts if I just took my time and let the saw do the work without trying to muscle it through there, which is how you're supposed to cut. So. <laughs> And this guy is 2,500 watts, and it was able to do both the vacuum and the miter saw at the same time. So we just turned on the inverter, and we're getting our oscilloscope reading. And yeah, as you can see, it is a sine wave. So it's definitely not a square wave or a modified All right, so the heater's on high. There we go, we have 1.5 kilowatts coming out of here, running the heater, and we still have a good sine wave. We have a couple of things on here, but that could just be um, my settings. I don't know how to program the oscilloscope. And down here I have the probes one probe is on the hot leg and one probe is on the neutral. Okay, we're about to turn on the saw. On the oscilloscope, it looked like it got a little nasty there for a few seconds while the saw was ramping up and then it settled out and became clean again. Uh, now again, that could be something with my settings on the oscilloscope because I'm not an oscilloscope expert by any means. Uh, I barely know how to turn this thing on, you know, but uh, I figure since I have it, we better plug it in and try. There we go. Three panels are now hooked up, just leaning on some chairs and they're all connected just with quick little connections here to some 10 gauge wire. Right now it says PV volts coming in is 143 volts. I'm guessing it's not actually using any of that power yet because that is volt open circuit, uh, not the maximum power point. And right now it says zero amps. So yeah, it's not using any of the power yet. And I'm gonna to try to set it to 58.8. Okay, so it says to switch to save. So I'm, I'm looking for save to be printed down here. Okay, yes. So now PV in has dropped in voltage, so I'm guessing that we're now using some of that, so let's check. DC, zero that out. Yes, so now we are at seven amps coming in. We're drawing 1,160 watts. We're putting into here about 480 watts from the PV, and we have about 1.5 kilowatts coming out on the AC side 
for this heater. The solar MPPT does work. I actually went and switched it to two panels instead of three uh, because we were so close to that 150 volt limit and I just didn't like that. I wanted it to be a little bit farther away from it. We were still under it, we never went over, but still a little bit too close for me. And both times this found the maximum power point of three panels in series or two panels in series. So the MPPT does work on this. It does have overload protection, so that's great. Uh, even when I overloaded it with the saw, the unit itself just shut itself down. Uh, the inverter is louder than I was expecting, so that's a little bit disappointing. Uh, it'd be nice if that wasn't the case, but still, it's okay. I just shut off the inverter and it looks like it's still pulling power in from the PV panels. A little over 200 watts at the moment. So it looks like it's floating the battery or trying to charge the battery a little bit. So it's just not uh, outputting the alternating current. And I haven't checked the generator remote start, and I haven't checked the USB output to a computer. Uh, you can probably see something on the screen. So let me know in the comments below if you would like me to kind of get into all those other features. Uh, this video is really just hitting on the main ones, and that is AC out and PV in and battery connection. We got it, and we can see our efficiency. So thank you everybody very much for watching. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share. Check out the links in the description below. It's not an affiliate link. If you want to go to Sigineer, I am going to link to them uh, because they were kind enough to supply this unit and it did not blow up. Uh, I will leave a link for the LG cells from Battery Hookup and that is an affiliate link. So if you buy the LG cells using my coupon code, David Paz, that does help out the channel. Thank you very much.